Chow, chow, baby. So today is the last day of 2023, and what better way to celebrate the best makeup of the year and some of the worst? So in case you're interested, then keep on watching. Hey guys, it's Kat and welcome to my channel. You guys, you heard me right. It is the best and some of the worst makeup of 2023. Now, I reviewed a bunch of makeup over the last year and I couldn't wait to share with you what worked best for my mature skin and what didn't work for my complexion. I put these products through the ringer. I even went back and retested some of my tried and true favorites and you are gonna be shocked when you find out what are the best makeup products of 2023. They are both a mix of drugstore and high-end, but I think in this case, I think drugstore might have won out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I've already took the liberty of applying my primer and what is my best primer of 2023? Well, actually, I'm gonna give you two, maybe three. I'm gonna give you options here. Did I just spit on the camera? I already primed my complexion with the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Universal Balm Powder. I picked this up during the Sephora holiday sale. It was in a little gift set and of course I got the mini size. You guys, this is such a beautiful primer that's gonna smooth your complexion, actually blurs your pores, and you know those little pores that you have on your nose? It even kind of makes those disappear as well. It has the ingredient Upslite that really has that smooth, almost silicone-y, slippy feel, but it also prolongs the length of your makeup. Now for my second favorite, because I always have, it's hard, it's hard to whittle it down to just one product, but if you know, you know. The Wet n Wild Prime Focus Primer Serum, you guys. I don't know why not a lot of people are talking about it, but it is affordable, it's beautiful on mature skin, it's got a hydrating quality, you only use a couple of drops, tap it into your complexion, it's magical. I don't know what's in this, well, I do. <laughs> It is that Bacuchio, which is also a skincare ingredient. It also has dragon fruit and lavender. So it doesn't have much of a lavendery scent, but it's beautiful on mature skin. Now I haven't been using it recently because I love it during the summertime. I think it has something to do with that. I do switch up my makeup from winter to summer. Our skin changes during the winter time. So sometimes I go in with more hydrating foundations or primers, but this is absolutely top notch in my book. As you can see, it is well loved and I will probably go back to using this as soon as it gets a little warmer. But those are my top picks for primers this year. For foundation, you know I love testing out foundation, skin tints, tinted moisturizers for our mature skin. I already had my favorites listed, but this one was a dark horse running. I cannot put this foundation down. And you're gonna be surprised too. It is the new e.l.f. Camel Hydrating CC Cream. It has an SPF of 30. It contains tremella mushroom and hyaluronic acid. It comes in 30 shades and it retails for $15. I did do a complete review on this. I cannot put this down. I'm in the shade Light 205 Neutral. It provides a dewy finish, but it's not tacky, it's not glowy. You just need one pump. And in my experience, I don't find it to provide full coverage. I find it to provide a beautiful medium coverage. Super easy to slap on. Slap on? It's super easy to apply. I just like using my fingertips, but it applies so smooth and so silky. And now that it's super cold and it's winter time, Hi, Hondo. I can feel the hydration. I have tried so many foundations this year. This one to me looks the most skin-like. It's the most comfortable. It lasts all day long. It has a beautiful, natural dewy finish that is just stunning on the skin. I know, it shocked me as well. That's pretty. I have so many foundations that I love this year. Now, a close runner up is the MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation. This is absolutely stunning. It provides medium to full coverage. It does provide a nice, natural, glowy finish, but this is quite pricey. Love this. I also love the new Smashbox Always On Foundation. I found that provided great coverage, especially during the hot, humid summer months, so I have to give that foundation a definite shout out. But you guys, as far as the winter season, as far as, I think this will fare fantastic during the summer as well. But this, for the price point, for the quality, for the availability, you guys, 
Elf knocked it out of the park. As far as the worst foundation goes, and this is just in my opinion, remember that, be kind. And some of these products just did not work for me, and maybe I can give you a heads up about these products, but I was super disappointed in the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brightening Color Correcting Foundation. Now this is made in Italy, it's super pricey. It's supposed to be one of those powder foundations that you apply. I just found it to be chalky on my skin. I found it to be somewhat orange on my complexion. I couldn't get it to look even on my skin. It just felt dry and cakey on my complexion. And I know Laura Geller is well known for these mineral baked foundations and her blushes are fantastic, but this was definitely a no-go for me. I think I featured it in a video of overhyped products. I fell for the hype. I really wanted this to work for my mature skin, but it was just not good, not pretty. And it was funny because when I was trying to find all of these products for this video, I was like, where the heck did I put it? I must have hit it because it was that bad. But yeah, so this was probably the worst foundation that I tried this year it was from Laura Geller. I'm sorry, Laura Geller, I really am. Now let's talk about concealers. It was the year of concealers. I know Makeup by Mario came out with one, House Labs by Lady Gaga, Tower 28, even Tula came out with one. Gucci has a concealer. I'm sorry, but the true and clear winner for me because I, I keep going back to it, it's from Tower 28, their One Swipe Hydrating Serum Concealer. I think this retails for about $22. In the big picture, drugstore makeup is getting super pricey. I do purchase about 99.9% .9 of my makeup and it puts things in perspective. It really does, because I'm paying for it. Do I want you to pay for it? Heck no, but I will recommend something that's really good, especially if it's a little bit more expensive. I think it's worth every penny. This is a fantastic concealer. Like I said, it's very hydrating, but this has been my go-to. It has the perfect consistency. It doesn't settle into fine lines. It hydrates that delicate under eye area because it's a serum concealer. It has medium coverage. Now I have compared it to the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Concealer. This is also a fantastic drugstore concealer. This has a slighter, thinner consistency and less coverage, but this is absolutely beautiful. This is probably my second place concealer for sure. But now that that's marinated, I like to tap it in with my ring finger just to blend it out. You can also use a dampened beauty sponge or a brush, but I like just tapping it in. To get fuller coverage, since this is such a pretty foundation, I'm gonna go in with my concealer brush and just tap it in. If you use a dampened beauty sponge for foundation or concealer, it's going to shear the product out more, but if you wanna get full coverage, you just use a dense brush, and that's what I'm doing with the concealer. And both ways work, but today, I want a little bit more coverage right under that eye. And as you can see, it just blends seamlessly with the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo CC Cream. Let's talk about bronzer. Simple, easy, my favorite, you know. It is from Revolution. It's the Ultra Cream Bronzer in Light. It just is the perfect consistency, it's so easily blendable. It retails for about $8, and I just like to tap it in right through there. Now, I have been testing out a new bronzer, and I can't wait to share that in an upcoming video, but it's gorgeous, so I can't wait to share that with you in the new year, which is what, tomorrow? <laughs> but this is my go-to. I always rely on this one. It just looks beautiful on the complexion. It lays smooth. When it dries down, it's not tacky. It just gives the face a perf the perfect amount of warmth. I tried that super expensive Gucci bronzer. Beautiful, very pricey. I don't recommend it unless you wanna be out $65. But Drugstore has really hit it out of the park with bronzers. So I highly recommend the Ultra Cream Bronzer from Revolution. It is my go-to. And if I had to pick a powdered bronzer, of course, you know, it's from Essence. It is the Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder. This to me is just beautiful. 
it's smoothing, it's, it's, look how worn out it is. If I'm using a much dewier foundation or it's summertime, this is the perfect bronzer and it's super affordable. Now for blush, I love liquid blush, cream blush, even powder brushes, brushes, powder blushes. And I got on a huge blush kick this year. I really did. All these different brands that I tried that I've never heard about, LYS, Pat McGrath, Danessa Myrick, RMS, Smashbox, Glossier, number seven, all very good liquid cream blushes, but you're gonna be super shocked. As far as my top favorite blush of 2023, it is a liquid blush. This one snuck up on me too. What's up with that? It is from e.l.f. It's their new camo liquid blush. Now, like I said, I reviewed it in a previous video. I cannot put these blushes down. I just cannot. They're so beautiful, creamy, easy to blend, super pigmented. And remember how bright, this is coming in hot pink. And I'm gonna show you how gorgeous it is. It is the perfect summer pop of pink, but it looks fantastic even in the winter time. And I'm just gonna place one dot like that. Okay, one dot and just tapping it in with my fingertips. It's so beautiful and bright, but look how easily it shears out. I know it looks scary at first. Then I like to take my dual complexion brush from e.l.f. and just swirl and blend. Swirl. I mean, it's beautiful and the longevity is fantastic. It doesn't transfer, it doesn't smudge. Best of all, it's not sticky or tacky. You know how you get those cream blushes or liquid blushes and your hair will stick to it? Oh, that's such a pet peeve of mine. I want a product that's gonna go on and stay on, but look how effortless that took. Right? These retail for $7 and I believe they come in 10 shades. They also include hyaluronic acid. So it's gonna be good for your skin. It's gonna be hydrating, especially if you have normal to dry skin like I do. But I found that this has the perfect amount of pigment. You have time to work with it. It's not gonna dry down super fast and it just blends in seamlessly. I always put way too much blush on this side. Okay, but see how easily it went on? As far as powder blushes go, I've always kind of steered clear of powder blushes because I thought it would make my skin look textured or, you know, kind of flat and cakey. But I was completely bowled over by this formula. It is from RMS Beauty. It is their Redimension Hydro Powder Blush. It is a gel to powder blush formula. And I actually got two shades, but the shade that I love that looks so fresh and pretty on the skin is the shade Pomegranate Fizz. This is gonna be so much fun in the summertime. It is a gel to powder formula, but look at the pigment. It is so gorgeous and it has, I don't wanna scare you, it doesn't have glitter in it. It has like a little shimmer that bounces the light from your cheek off so it doesn't bounce your cheek off it bounces the light off your cheek and it gives your skin a luminosity and a juiciness that is unparalleled to any other powder blush that i have ever tested out ever that's why i'm so obsessed with it. i'm actually obsessed with rms beauty their products are just top notch but is stunning. I know I swatched it a bit hard. It looks kind of scary on the hand, but it's so easily blendable. You just need a tiny bit. It is absolutely gorgeous. As far as my favorite powder blush goes, it is from RMS Beauty. It's absolutely lovely. It looks fantastic on mature skin. Like I said, it bounces the light off your cheeks. It just gives it that luminosity and juiciness and I'm in love with this. Now that we got most of our complexion products on, I wanna talk about eyeshadow. I tested out a lot of eyeshadow palettes this year, some drugstore, some high-end, and some cream eyeshadows as well. And it's funny because I think towards the end of the year, I was gravitating towards more neutrals, more matte looks, not as much shimmers or glitters, and uh, this was tough. At first, I was gonna tell you my favorite eyeshadow palette was from Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude Palette. This is gorgeous. It is a beautiful blend of cool tone nudes. The shimmers are absolutely stunning. I've used this quite a bit when I first purchased it. I believe it was back in August, 
but this is so well loved, so well used. I love how it has pops of pinks and it has these darker shades of taupes. You can come up with so many versatile neutral eyeshadow looks. That's why I love it so much. But the palette that I've reached for, you're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate it. I know you're gonna hate it. It's actually from Patrick Ta. It is their Major Dimensions 3 All Matte Eyeshadow Palettes. Now, before you go, oh my God, the price tag is so expensive. If you're like me and you love neutrals and you wanna switch it up and you don't wanna think too hard about what kind of look you wanna come up with, the Major Dimensions Eyeshadow Palette is probably gonna be great for you. You have a row of all warm neutrals and a row of all cool tone neutrals, which I absolutely love. There are days where I'm like, you know what? I want a nice neutral look that's warm. Boom, I just take these three shades, call it a day. And there are days where I want a nice cool tone neutral look. I will just go in with these shades through here. And these last two shades are cream eyeshadows, which I actually have been using as eyeliner. So what I wanna do today, I'm gonna go in with the second shade right through here and just go right above my crease. And I'm using a refer 15 and they're quite powdery, but the pigment is so beautiful, super easy to blend. I find it just so simple to use. Like I said, there's not a lot of thinking involved. You kind of know what you want when you enter this palette. It's not overwhelming. And the formula is beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. Okay, so. On a more tapered brush, I'm gonna go in with this color right through here. And this is a number one. Tap off the excess. And then just kind of hit the outer corner on both sides. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's so easy to apply. It is definitely pricey. But if you're like me and you just wanna do a lot of neutral eyeshadow looks, you're gonna use this every single day and you're not gonna run out of options. That's what I love about this palette. And then I'm gonna take a pencil brush and I'm gonna take that same shade and then just run it along the lower lash line to give myself some definition as opposed to using eyeliner like that. Now, just to clean up and highlight that brow bone area, I'm gonna take the lightest shade here, tap that off, and just hit it right below the brow. And then take that first brush and just blend it. Very subtle, neutral. Love this eyeshadow palette. Okay, for my favorite cream eyeshadow, if you saw that video of my favorite cream eyeshadows, you're gonna know it's from RMS Beauty, the Eye Lights. Stunning formula. This is the shade Supernova. This is gonna complement the look that we have now. It's a shimmer, but it doesn't have glitter in it. It's just gonna make your eyes look like glass. And I love this shade. It's kind of like a coppery shade. And then just kind of blend it out. But what I love about this shadow, it stays all day long. It stays put. Look how seamless that is. It's going to really smooth out that lid. It blends easily. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Love the shade. You really don't need much either. It really just looks like glass on the eyes. So pretty, so easy to work with. And you don't even have to do all what I'm doing right now. You can just do this for a one and done eyeshadow look and take that brush and just blend it. I think the older I get, the more simplified I want my makeup looks to be. Okay, so this is kind of a dramatic eyeshadow look, but I wanted to show you how gorgeous these shadows are. I know at a price point of $27, these cream eyeshadows seem expensive, but again, if you're a minimalist and you don't use a lot of makeup and you just want to throw something quick and easy on, this is absolutely perfect, right up your alley. Now, for eyeliner, 
I'm just gonna sound like a broken record, but this is probably the most affordable eyeliner you are ever going to find. It is from Essence. It is their long lasting eye pencil and I'm in the shade Hot Chocolate. It is creamy, it is waterproof. It's also made in Germany. It is fantastic. Ava loves it so much I had to get her one, but I love using this to tight line. And I believe this retails for like $3 and I just want a tight line up through there. It doesn't budge, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't transfer down to my lower lashes. I think the only thing I don't like about this eyeliner, if there's that, I can't sharpen it, but no worries. I'm just gonna go on the outer thirds of my eye to line, and then on the lower lash line, like that. Oh, okay. And then I'm gonna take a brush, smoke that out. Now for my best and favorite mascara of 2023, I actually didn't like this mascara at first. I really didn't. But then when I started using it more, you know how when you first test out a mascara, you're like, oh, it's too gloppy, it's too goopy, or whatever. It takes several days for you to kind of break in the mascara. I swear by this mascara, you guys, it is from City Beauty. It is the Beyond Mascara. It has a lot of ingredients to, to nourish your delicate lashes. I find that it is a beautiful formula that not only thickens and lengthens, but at the end of the day, when you remove it, it washes off super easily. It doesn't clump, it doesn't smudge, and knowing that I'm putting biotin and some ingredients that are gonna help my lashes, as opposed to using, you know, a lesser expensive mascara that's gonna probably not help them, I just feel good using this particular formula because I know it's gonna nourish my lashes. And that's just one coat. Isn't that crazy? Okay, mascara is on. For finishing powder, drugstore baby. <laughs> it's from Hard Candy of all places. It is their Chilling Wonder Sheer Envy Loose Powder. I have called this fairy dust because literally it performs miracles on the complexion and normally I don't like to set under the eyes because sometimes that powder is just going to get trapped there and make it look cakey and age you but there's something magical like I said about the chilling wonder powder it is so finely milled and I'm just going to press a tiny bit under the eye to set that concealer so it lasts all day and then right through my most porous areas. Now this is a translucent powder that's just gonna set everything in place. And I only like to set my T-zone right under my eyes and right through there. Sometimes under my nose and maybe my chin. I don't wanna powder the entire face. I want this complexion to still look radiant and luminous. But you guys, this is by far the best translucent powder I have tested out all year. You can get it at Walmart. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and go, getting back to the worst, I forgot, worst mascara ever, Fenty Beauty Hella Thick Mascara. You guys, not only is this an awkward tube of mascara, it was promising at first. Love the formula, kind of like the wand tip applicator. It really thickened my lashes, made them look super long, but within the first five minutes, total panda eyes, like smudge, transfer. This was like expensive too. I wanna say it was about 20 bucks, maybe more than that, 28. I don't know, I'll be sure to put all the products listed in the links down below. Now, if you do click on those links, it does help out my channel a little bit. So if you do, I genuinely appreciate it. And if you don't, that's cool too. But yeah, I had to, um, yeah, say this was a horrible mascara, did not care for it. Also, Honorable mention of mascara goes out to the Lash and Roll Mascara by e.l.f. I love that mascara. I think I'm like on my third or fourth tube, but City Beauty just beats it every time. Okay, for the final product, lips. I have to give it up to e.l.f. once again, the O Satin Lipstick. This is in the shade Drive. I love how it's very sleek, how it has a magnetized cap like so. These are really high-end luxury lipsticks, and I'm gonna show you how beautiful this shade is. Super creamy, super hydrating. Oh, gorgeous. 
Look how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I don't even think you need a lip oil or a lip gloss to make it look juicier, but this is a stunning shade. It wears off gracefully. It doesn't feather into your fine lines and it's $9. $9 and it comes in so many fantastic shades. This is my favorite lipstick of 2023, but again, something snuck up on me. If you're looking for a lipstick that's going to hydrate your lips, but also last throughout champagne, hors d'oeuvres, dinner. I got so many compliments on this lipstick from RMS. It is their legendary serum lipstick. This is a lipstick, lip serum, and a lip stain hybrid with eight hours of hydration. I wore this to our holiday Christmas party and it went through the gamut. It lasted throughout drinks. It lasted throughout all the food that I ate. And one of my coworkers, Christina was like, I'm just staring at your lips going, what, ha what do you have on your lips? What lipstick is that? And I told her it was this lipstick, the legendary serum lipstick from RMS. Now I'm in the shade Ruby Moon, which is like a poppy orange red, perfect for the holiday season. It literally stayed on my lips the entire day. It didn't feather, it didn't bleed, it was hydrating all day long. And the shade is absolutely gorgeous. Like you can see, it is a beautiful poppy red. Isn't that stunning? Now these retail for $35, super expensive, I know, but well worth it. Now, if I had to pick an honorable mention in terms of lipstick that's gonna stay and last all day, of course, I'm gonna go with the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Liquid Lipstick. This is no budge. It ain't going anywhere. It comes in so many fantastic shades. It just stays all day, but it's not drying. I hate like a liquid lipstick that's supposed to stay all day, but it dries your lips out. This, in my opinion, is way better than the new L'Oreal that came out. Did not care for that liquid lipstick. What is it, the Infallible? I don't know, but it was bad. This was just bad. But yeah, love the O Satin lipsticks from e.l.f. You cannot go wrong with the price, but I'm gonna show you how pretty the RMS is. Here we are with the final look. So I wanted to show you how gorgeous the RMS Legendary Serum Lipstick is. When you apply it, it actually feels like you're applying water to the lips because that's how hydrating it is. And like I said, the longevity of this lipstick is bar none. It really, you could put it through a whole night of drinking, eating, kissing. We still kiss, right? And it just stays flawless and beautifully hydrated on your lips. And I love how it doesn't bleed or feather into our mature lip line. I know that's an issue for a lot of us, but did not find any issues with that. Now, if you made it this far in the video, I wanted to share with you what my favorite skin tints were. We can't leave out skin tints or tinted moisturizers. And I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised that my all time favorite skin tint of the year is from Maybelline. It is their Super Stay 24 hour skin tint. You guys, anytime I want my skin to look flawless, but also radiant, I reach for this one because it is so beautiful. I always forget how pretty it is. It provides light to medium coverage and it just looks really seamless on the complexion. Now I do have to say my second favorite, it's from Revlon. It is the Illuminance Serum Tint. Now this has a broad spectrum SPF of 15 and it also contains ginger root, vitamin C and vitamin E. This one contains vitamin C for brightening. Both are fantastic. This one kind of has like a, I don't know, kind of a sheen to it. It kind of bounces the light off your complexion. Whereas the Revlon Illuminance looks more skin-like, more natural, really just evens out the complexion. Both are fantastic. It's up to you which kind, pick your poison. They're both excellent and they're both drugstore. And then the worst skin tint. I spent a lot of money on this and there was a lot of hype on it, is from Hourglass, the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. I think this retails for about $50 was not impressed, doesn't offer a lot of coverage, and I think for the price point of a skin tint, you want something that's gonna look super skin-like, natural on the complexion. This just basically disappeared on my complexion, and you have to apply a lot just to get any sort of coverage whatsoever. Sheer to light coverage at best. If that's your cup of tea, I get it, but at this price point, I say no. It's, it's just not worth it in my opinion, but yeah. So those are my favorite makeup products of 2023 for mature skin and some of the worst. And I just wanted to share with you what I really love, what I've been enjoying using and what I reach for 
all the time. So I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today on this last day of 2023. I wish you a fantastic happy new year 2024. It's almost here. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. I would love it if you'd be a part of our family. But for now, mahalo kita. I love you. Happy new year. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.